Welcome back. If you didn't see part one yet, go check it out first to see the first half of the locomotives I reviewed. Anyway, let's get going with the final eight locomotives. Coming in at spot eight is Spitfire! Along with having the best name I have ever heard a locomotive had, Spitfire is honestly quite a good runner for what he does. Being a short engine, he fits in quite well at Denko hauling coal tippers around. He also has a fantastic soundtrack to boot, which helps with the workload. However, he has one issue that keeps him from being higher up. If you remember Big Iron back in part 1, you'd remember his coupling was glitched so rolling stock would be raised up. Well, in this case, this is an issue of Spitfire's back coupling for the coal tippers. Since they can be slightly raised up, it can cause the tippers to derail. However, this only happens with the coal tippers, and as long as you put another car before it, you should be fine. Clacking along into spot 7 is Knickerbocker. Being the biggest 040 saddle tank on the railway, thanks to his size and strength, he is one of the best freight engines to be used. He mainly pulls the maintenance train to repair the right-of-way on the railway, but can be used in almost any other type of freight workload. He has some of the best music in game with classics like Fly Me to the Moon with him. However, he does spawn in a smaller town between two bigger towns, which can make him be used less often than other engines on the railway. All in all though, thanks to his strength, he is quite a powerful workhorse and is certainly a useful engine when needed. Rumbling along is the only diesel on this list, Rutley. Being the only diesel on a railway that has mostly steam engines on it can be quite strange to see, but he does a great job of what he does anyway. Being the quarry's main long distance hauler, he is actually quite a good runner to say the least. In the past, his music, like a lot of other engines on this list, has been attacked by copyright. However, even so, he still runs well and since he got all his music back, he gets a secure spot at number 6. The biggest engine in Summer Wales, Gary, slowly comes into spot 5. For being the biggest engine on the railway, he is also one of the oldest as well. Due to his age and Roblox's constant updates, he has had plenty of bugs and issues come at him. Even with these bugs, he's still really powerful for his size. With a pretty good selection of music, he'll be in my top 5 of my favorite locomotives of Summer Wales for years to come. Slowly roaring into number 4 is the smallest engine in Wales, Wannabe. Now, contrary to how most people see Wannabe, I find her a joy to run. For being the railway's only petrol engine, she's quite good at what she does. I find her very well suited for the maintenance train, and thanks to her small size, she can go just about anywhere on the railway with no trouble. Most people see her as bland and sort of useless, and I can see why, but for myself, I see her as a very useful engine when it comes to jobs that require smaller engines. And to top it off, her music is just perfect for her. Racing into number 3 is the yellow blur that is Richmond. Richmond was once the slowest engine in Zimmer Wales, being so slow that he was often neglected due to him being at times quite useless. But since his rebuild, he has become the second fastest engine in game thanks to a bug with the A and D keys. His rebuild was also helpful for getting him noticed as well. Now you may be asking me, yo Yuzi, did you not say back in part 1 with Arrowworth that he was too fast? Then why is Richmond so high up then? Well, if you remember from part 1, I put him so low because of how he is used the troll engine. With Richmond, I haven't really encountered that. Most of the time, it's me who is causing the crashes on Richmond by accident, not the other way around. So overall, thanks to his speed, rebuild, and music, he gets to be my third favorite engine. Carefully backing up in number 2 is the tender engine Elmira. I really wanted to put her at number 1, but I was persuaded otherwise. Overall, her design is just awe-inspiring, being one of the most detailed locomotives in Wales. Her detail isn't the only good thing about her. She has the most toggleable parts on her, like air brakes, and having the option to control brake fans. However, there is one massive issue that keeps me from putting her at spot one, and that is her tendency to hop the rails. She's derailed so much that at this point, it's impossible to count how much she has derailed. The main issue is that her tender to locomotive connection is not the best. That means 9 out of 10, her tender causes the derailments. Overall, I really love her design and her hidden quirks. Her music is also really good, seeing the grandness of her. 
but her derailing issues just keeps her from getting into spot one. And at number one is the slowest engine in game, nicknamed the Box on Wheel, it's... John Henry! John Henry is by far my favorite locomotive in Somewhere Wales. His strength is equal to that of Gary's and his size is the same as Knickerbocker. But what sets him apart is his reliability. He is by far one of the most reliable engines I have driven so far. He almost never derails, except on certain track work where a lot of other engines are known to derail. His music is by far the best in game, and his design is that of Elmiro's in detail. He is by far my most favorite engine in Wales, and thinks that he secures a spot at the top of this list. Thank you all so much for sticking with me on this long trip between two videos. This took a ton of effort to make, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Comment down below your favorite engine and if you like this style of video. I'll be taking a break from making videos for a while, but stay tuned for my next video coming out soon. Again, thank you for watching, and have a great day.